Welcome back game development enthusiasts, we've been making fantastic progress. In our previous video, we successfully added animations and polished up the basic movement of our player character. You can see the fruits of our labor on the left side of your screen. For this episode, we'll be shifting our focus towards camera control. We're going to be incorporating Cinemachine into our game, allowing us to make our camera follow the direction of our mouse, giving our player a more immersive control experience. But that's not all, we're also going to be tidying up our running state, optimizing it for better performance and readability. That's what we're set to achieve in this video, which you can preview on the right side of your screen. So, are you ready to make our game even better? Let's dive in! To begin, let's ensure we have Cinemachine installed in our project. Go to Window, Package Manager and in the Unity Registry, search for Cinemachine. If you don't already have it installed, go ahead and install it. Cinemachine is a powerful tool that can greatly simplify our camera operations and allow for smooth camera transitions. So it's a great addition to our project. Once Cinemachine is installed, we're going to create a free look camera. To do this, right click in the hierarchy panel, navigate to Cinemachine and select free look camera. Let's name this game object free look camera. Now, over in the inspector panel of our free look camera, we see two parameters follow and look at, both of which requires transforms. So let's drag and drop our player into these fields. Now, in our scene view, we can see that the camera is focused on our player's feet, which isn't quite what we want. To fix this, create a new game object as a child of the player in the hierarchy panel and name it focus point. Drag this focus point into the follow parameter of the free look camera and the Mixamo rig hips into look at. But wait, we're using the new input system, right? So we need to add another script into our free look camera, add a new component called Cinemachine Input Provider. This is where we'll assign input actions for our camera. We'll need to head back into our input actions asset to set our look action. Create a new action, rename it to look, set the action type to value and the control type to vector2, then create a new binding for the look action and set the path to delta mouse. Don't forget to save the asset before you exit the input actions. Next, you might see more errors popping up. That's because we need to update our input handler script to include the on look method. So head over into the input handler script, hover over the player inputs class and hit command dot and select implement interface. Now, a new method was added called on move. Let's remove the throw inside this method and head over back into Unity. Under the Cinemachine Input Provider component, set the XY axis to our locomotion look input action reference. Now, if we hit play, we'll notice the axes are inverted, which is a default setting we don't want. So let's deselect invert for the Y axis and select invert for the X axis. Also, change the binding mode parameter to world space. I found some parameters for the top rig, middle rig and bottom rig that would work well with our character. Set the height of the top rig to 2.6 and radius 5, middle rig to 0 and radius 6 and bottom rig to minus 0.8 and radius 5. Let's hit play and see our progress. Fantastic! Now that we've got our camera system working, it's time to refactor our running state script. Let's start by modifying the move player method to accept delta time and return a vector tree. So we'll write vector tree movement equals move player delta time. Next, we'll copy the line player state machine dot control dot move from move player to our update logic and pass the movement we're receiving from the move player method. Back in our player state machine script, let's add a new variable that we can get but not set called main camera transform. In the awake method, we'll initialize this variable to the camera.main.transform. Back to our running state script, let's tweak the move player method a bit. We'll need two vector three variables, vector three forward equals player state machine dot main camera transform dot forward and vector three right equals player state machine dot main camera transform dot right. Set the y axis for both forward and right to zero. 
this gives us the correct direction of movement. Next, we need to normalize this vector to have a magnitude of 1. Following that, following that we'll return forward times player state machine dot input handler dot movement value dot y plus right times player state machine dot input handler dot movement value dot x. Lastly, we'll change our apply rotation to take in a movement vector 3 and a delta time. Let's remove the vector 3 movement we were creating inside the apply rotation method and we can also remove the if statement. Why remove the if statement? Well, we're going to move the apply rotation method call after our if statement in the update logic so we don't duplicate the same check. Don't forget to pass in the delta time and the movement to the apply rotation method call. Now back into Unity under the free look camera, go into the inspector and find extensions. From extensions, add the Cinemachine Collider. In the newly added component, go to ignore tab and select player now before we click play and test it go to the player and make sure that it has the player tag if it doesn't or you do not have the tag just add a new tag and call it player and just like that we've successfully revamped our camera system and refactor our running state script we've shown how versatile cinemachine can be and how it can help bring our character movement to life by the looks of it, we've come a long way from the start, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are plenty more aspects to explore, more tweaks to be made, and undoubtedly more fun to be had. If you found this tutorial beneficial, do hit the like button, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. We're already halfway towards our goal of 1000 subscribers, and every bit of your support brings us closer to reaching that milestone. In the upcoming episodes, we'll be covering more exciting topics, digging deeper into the realm of game development, so stay tuned for that. Until then, stay curious, keep learning, and most importantly, enjoy the process. Because here at Black Hole Blueprints, we believe that every journey of creation is a journey worth cherishing. Happy coding, folks!